What is going on, students? This is Devlin Cassidy, aka The Scholar, and if you have not seen on my Twitter, uh, I finally did it. I finally got first place at a shop challenge with Chrono Jet Crest, and we're going to be covering the list that took it up here uh, for my shop challenge up in the state of Vermont. Um, this list is crazy. This deck is so much fun, even though it's really, really glass cannony, but everyone on my twitter once i posted it was like how did you do it i want to know the lines i want i want to talk about it and so uh i'm gonna to totally do that for you all so um before we get started if you guys need any of these amazing products that i use like you know these beautiful play mats you know these beautiful like sleeves stuff like that uh deck boxes all the whole nine yards man go shop with thankritual.com um they have so much stuff coming out they just put up some pre-release pre-orders for some play mats and other things like that um so Again, more stuff coming and maybe a big announcement coming soon. I may have something in the works. So so just stay tuned with that. But make sure you go shop with my amazing supply sponsor. And of course, I want to be playing this game if it wasn't for them. Make sure you guys go shop with Kingslayer Cards. Use the promo code SCHOLAR. Save 5% off. It supports me. It supports the um, it supports the channel. It supports my team sponsor and one of the best stores in the community. And most importantly, gets you cardboard. You know, their deck set pre-orders are up, which I haven't talked about yet. But is going to get talked about very soon. Um, my whole entire, like reaction and predictions for what the meta is going to look like after july 12th when those deck sets drops but those are definitely worth it so if you go pre-order those right now you can save yourself a little bit of money while also guaranteeing yourself having one of the most fire decks for the summer coming your way but that's enough for me to get it started as you guys can see like i changed the setup a little bit got a got a got a poster now got my premium battle deck set poster because you know harry and night rose both have special plates in my heart so, but we're going to talk about the best era g boss and that's chrono jet so without further ado let's get started so, of course, you're playing Mazer Gear, so you have to play Chrono Dran as your starter. Uh, everybody knows I have a more favorite starter in Gear Chronicle. It's the uh, the other purple dragon, because I really like purple. Purple's my favorite color, as you can't tell. Like, there's some residual purple from my LED lighting and stuff like that, so it's just really perfect. So, that is what you need. Then, on to the boy himself. On to the grade threes, we're going to be playing four copies of chrono jet dragon chrono jet dragon is the mainstay of this deck you can only ride into chrono jet dragon if you get the crest so why not play four of him uh, or a chrono jet card this card lets you get into your history collection you guys may be asking yourself why don't i play the v for like the sentinel restrict and things like that uh i don't like the fact that the v costs a counter blast um i think that's very poor for the deck as well as like the gift marker doesn't matter plus like if i have to g assist i much rather have a higher chance of me hitting into my history collection one because the history collection is what makes your markers and you like holds like starts your whole game plan um so that's why i just like this a little more because it accelerates your gb count faster as well so uh just four of the raw chrono jet is the best um and i have the little the cute uh hot stamps because they're they're neat but um for those that don't know what chrono jet does uh because you know standard like threw him by the wayside and like you only matter a little bit for the next stage um his gb2 is when he attacks your he gets plus 5k and then your opponent can't use grade ones or graders which actually kind of came up in some matchups like against grand blue like they had to like guard weirdly so they had to like expend their water spouse digits early and just hold on to their protect markers um when like they sometimes had to unopportunely counter charge so just so that way they could guard the chrono jet when it came down the lane but um this card is really good and then his on stride is you can see be one to bot deck something which comes up in some matchups too like if grand blue only leaves one card on the field and they have like the beatrice and the cannoneer and drop just bot decking that card to just turn off those negro lily lines is very very strong so uh, don't do not sleep do not sleep uh, as you guys saw in the list too, we're playing one copy of Chrono Jet Dragon G. So this is for some plays where not only do you want to like early time leap um, while you're striding. So that way you can set up your time leap patterns better. Like you typically ride this before you go into your history build turn um, if you need to ride this card. But it's also a card that you can G assist into that you can ride. So it was five total cards that I wanted to be able to ride into if I G assisted. Um, and so this was kind of like the best slot since it's like an on-demand time leap So you can turn like dead triggers into your hand um, Into better grade one units like turning an Urwatar that's stuck in your hand into a Melum is crazy 
so that was like the whole thought process here but also um this chrono jet also has the time leap skill like raw so if you have already used the next grade three you can call him out and he gets power off the history build so he just makes a little bit better numbers um especially because he, then he'll become um uh, 16 on his own which is really good into history collection metas because a lot of stuff state sticks on 11ks um or early like once you have that like the history build turn like going um first uh, you have enough face-up cards in the G-Zone so where you can just, like, really punish them for if they went into their history collection try just being on that 11K. So, uh, very, very good stuff. And then the last grade three in the entire deck, we are playing uh, Steam Fighter Bali. Um, Bali is insane. Bali actually, like, does a lot of crazy fixing, and there's a lot of funny things you can do with this card. Um, the main thing, though, is it becomes, like, a free, like, 23 or 33k beat stick, depending on what force, like, marker you went with, um, because it, it depends on the matchup. Um, but this also checks top seven for a Chrono Jet, so, um... We, we we care that it gains power and that it shuffles and that it can also pseudo deck thin for us so there's a lot of application inside this card just by being called with it because of how other pieces in this deck works um but it's also good because uh, on the grade two turn um which i can explain this uh, when we're talking about the ride fixer if you have another grade two and you kind of want like want to push you can like swing a grade two if you don't have the jet then you can boost with the the ride fixer down the column tuck the other grade two to the bottom call this out and then like try to find a jet so there's like that whole entire uh line like that can go off um which is pretty simple so that's that's another line that i really do like inside um the whole entire uh deck is just really really good then on for the grade twos we're playing four copies of the ride fixer so you have to play four copies of this because finding mazer gear is so crucial like i have a very high win rate going first hitting the crest if you don't hit the crest though your win rates are very very low like 75 percent of the time you are going to lose if you miss the crest like that's just how this deck inherently works but the deck is really good if you hit the crest um it's just kind of that pitfall um so you have to play the four ride fixtures even though i much rather play this at three and play a fourth history maker uh just because history maker a has a time leap skill and has more applications with the cards that we work with but this card still is crazy the fact that i can literally call my over trigger i did this in the finals you call your over trigger you CB1 and you tuck it back to the deck and call a like Melum to set up your history collection turn. Like going first, that was game three in the finals. Um, it was over because my opponent damage checked his over trigger on accepting this swing. So it was it was a wrap from there. So that was that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, this card has a lot of good application. I just use this a lot to like set up like the, the Melum plays where you just put triggers back into your deck. Like this is something that you will see inside my list of where you can continually cycle triggers back into your deck. So where your your trigger density is a lot higher than your opponent. So if you eat or if you keep able to be staying at low damage which you can do via like recycling your heals um this card becomes very good so uh props to uh Boucher road for giving Chron um for giving gear chronicle a really really good ride fixer um and i already kind of talked about him but i'm playing three copies of history maker dragon the og triple r's because i i love g era triple r's and sps man like if you guys talk to me about this and my history thing like i think g era is some of the peak like rarities of the game peak points of the game and this is another reason too why i wanted to play this deck in particular um just because it brought back good memories from g era um but when this uh, unit attacks the Vanguard, you can CB1, choose one of your rearguards and time leap it. So you'll just bind that card, choose a card from your deck, call it that's grade plus one. Um, really standard just to do this with like an Urwatar, call another Melum, go crazy, right? Uh, yeah, this card is so good. I love I love this card. Um, it becomes a 12k when you're on the history build. And once you get that history build face up, he becomes a really good beater um, into other Excel decks and stuff like that. Or well, not other Excel decks, but excel decks and the like because that's just how it works but um yeah this is another attack extender so in in your grade two lineups alone you play uh seven attack extenders um which then lets you get your attack counts like really really high up so so don't sleep on that um at all for sure then uh for a weirder part of my list and i think this is the one that like dave vect kind of had a question on it was like why aren't you playing more consistency cards over like being greedy um i think that you have to really exploit the high roll with this deck so that's why i'm playing ear um so i play ear more so for less not even for the twin right like if you ride him and do the blaster dark thing cool like that's that's fine i just like the fact that he can be used as a history collection discard because he counts as a grade three when he's discarded so paying for that some cost triggers for him 
because he's not using it to replicate for stride it's just off a raw discard see that's the thing is that because the stride crits don't work and the stride pseudo stride deniers don't work for the history collection stride these still do and that's what i think gear chronicle like has an edge so just playing the ear cob and being able to get like an extra drive like if i need it like it comes up so that's why i play ear cob and then for the little techies that i play in the in the, in the twos for the one-off slots i'll just show these off here upstream dragon Really good card for a grade one that we play that we like to tutor out, but he also gets really big on his own. He's the he's the he's the largest grade two that we have like naturally. It's the 15k grade two, and so on a force one while uh, like going first or going second, like he's a 30k rear guard on his own pre boost. So he's really really good. Um, delayed blazer lets you time leap and extend for free and some attack patterns where like this is stuck in the deck right and then like you had like a rested grade two and you have your vanguard swinging which we'll get to why your vanguard can time leap in a second um and you just be able to call like you were able to time leap a grade one and a grade zero so then you call this in the grade one and then you time leap the grade two that's rested and you go up to three and so then you go in like to bali and then to search more so like delayed blazer is really good as a one of i kept like drawing into him though so like my the extensions with him didn't come up as much as i wanted it to but uh this card is still good and he gets a lot of power for when he sees other units placed and then of course upstream is so good if you want though if you don't like like the delayed blazer or if you want to like cut like move up like upstream like to two you can cut an ear cob i just like the consistency of having the the six in deck that count as the pseudo stride cost without having grade threes to be really nice um because it does hurt when you have to like ride this or it goes to damage but it's fine because you can recycle it if you heal it out so i'm not too worried about that all right now on to the grade ones you already know four copies of this like really like not as expensive as the uh Sharon Nui one but like one that's still expensive enough this is four copies of Mazer gear so this card is wild um i don't know why they made the crest markers say draw a card that's so crazy because going second you literally put four cards in your hand and get a crest it's so wild they're like the amount of times where it's like we're like in tempo like in theory like you should deny the grand blue player like the the column bar so that way like they don't out advantage you with the ghost ship the fact that i can literally just keep in tempo and just pass and like not feel like man i maybe i wanted that card right like it's just crazy because it's a pot agreed guardian take a quick shield like so good going second still really good going first drawing two going first is crazy so yeah like this this card is crazy um and then the crest is even more wild so yeah we love we love mazer gear for sure um not, not not too much to explain that there because it's such a brick so there'll be times where i literally am just like thinning that card out of deck just because like i don't want to draw it i don't want to draw it i don't want to like have this in my hand this is pg discard fodder this is discard fodder for ear cob this is discard fodder for all this other stuff for like next stage and everything so yeah you're just like thinning that card out or you're just holding that for discard fodder after turn one but uh, it's so crucial that you see it on turn one of course um arguably the best grade one in the deck like not not the best grade one in the deck but like this card is insane uh search for heals search for chrono jet search for whatever and then pitch for a total sum of grade three again why we play the ear cob because like it comes up where like oh i have to pitch the ear cob because i like the grade three that i added um because if i have to like add a heal i'd much rather have a heal over an ear cob um so right um and i maybe want that other grade three in my hand so uh this comes up a lot this card is really good um this card like fixes a lot of stuff uh for uh gear chronicle and again as a is a card that subs itself for grade three um and that's why you want to play lost gear dog eight play for consistency um even though you're still a high roll deck Alrighty, on to the girl herself two copies of melum people were begging me to play this at three and i go i, I don't know um i wanted to play another card over the third melum and i'll get into it in a second but melum is still wild in 20 uh, what, are, what are we in 2024 yeah this card's like 10 years old something crazy like that no so it came out in 2016 right was that was that when gbt05 came out was that 2016 or am i tripping or maybe it was 2014 2015 like somewhere in the winter yeah i think it was so this card's over 10 years old and this card's still crazy um the fact that it does not a cost and it does everything with tiktok is still wild uh, this is like your best extender in the entire deck uh so you can't sleep on melum uh she's so good uh if i did have room i would play more but you just you you don't have room unfortunately just for how the deck works but like still one of the best cards in the deck one of the best cards you will always want to recycle if she does not get trapped off a tiktok bind but now on to the spice two copies of causality dragon 
So, uh, a couple people went over this, like Naro Samurai went over this, uh, I think Dave did too, like there was a post about this in the Vanguardians chat. Um, this card is the coolest interaction and one of the things that drew me to wanting to play Crest Jet over Steam Maidens. Um, because, uh, we'll kind of get into this now, but since it gives this skill the red text on hit effect, this effect that it gives this will always proc. It's pretty cool. It's pretty lit. I like I can't I can't even be mad because it's just it's just crazy. So you can literally do lines where you can stack like two to three of this effect onto here. And so not only does your Vanguard go on hit bot deck, something goes on hit bot deck time leap two to three cards. Like that's wild. That th th then th this card makes this like one of the best like uh history collection strides ever. Um because it's just that good. But yeah, so like that's the whole entire like preface like with the causality dragon. So the causality dragon is gonna buff it and just make it just do a bunch of time leap stuff. So I really really do enjoy the fact that we do have access to causality. Um, there there are lines. I'll, I'll show you guys the lines where you can like do like two to three additional attacks, but it's all for free. Like that's just the crazy part is that you don't have to spend into the counter blast. So if your opponent gives you early counter blast, but also drops the Hanali, then you can play into it. So even though Hanali like is actually one of the biggest things that hurt this deck, um, I actually don't mind it if you're actually able to play like the mitigation game. Um, you're able to pretty much not die as fast because you're able to stay at low damage um, and just push like just really good numbers over time. Um, so yeah cannot be mad there the final grade one before the all best grade one of all time take away dragon this card broke the deck so i did not i i played this in in miami but it didn't come up the way i wanted it to nor did like i i think i found out about this card too late to where i couldn't truly see the lines um, but you use this to put back triggers and you use this to put back replicating pieces as you notice we do not play ribble I don't like the fact I don't have room for Ribble right now because I think Ribble is a better card. But the fact that you can just blindly put back triggers today, like, oh, I guarded with this heal. But, uh, oh, I time leap two cards and I've G guarded twice. Cool, these two heals are going back to deck. I don't care if I can't G guard anymore. I'm going to be able to continue living. Um, like, this card is so good. Like, uh, my, my homie Jared, shout out that I played twice uh, that event um, because he's, he's grown as a really good player. Um, was able to was just was like no we have to kill this so like I, I i didn't was i wasn't able to protect this like in last turn so i had it up but i was about to go into a history build turn i was like i'm gonna put like six triggers back to that and he was like uh call ghoul dragon ghoul dragon snipe the snipe the tick away like we can't have this then i um i ruined it back to deck but that, that's fine right <laughs> um uh but yeah uh take away is really good still like don't sleep on that card that's another upstream call target if you want it to be uh, if you're like sitting in your mitigation line so don't don't sleep on that card either uh, and then of course elementaria i think we all know how good elementaria is at this point there's no reason to like really cover it so uh and then two copies of the best grade zero in the game like no one can argue with me this otherwise like TikTok is crazy a free attack extension that gives you soul is wild um i'm i'm sorry like sometimes you do find yourself blowing through soul the fact that this gives you an extra an additional resource and an attack is wild so uh, we love TikTok. TikTok is so good TikTok melon combo still crazy strong um yeah you just you just go wild like if i could play more i could play more but like there's you don't want to like mess up your ride consistencies too much so i think two is the perfect number i think you should be like playing almost the same ratio as you do with melons although you could play like a three two split like with the melons like of course on to the triggers playing four copies of the, like the dumbest things that bushiro has ever printed i still think these defensive draw crits are like one of the best things that bushiro has printed in a long time i really do like these um this is the heart thump worker you draw a card if uh it's checked defensively and it gives your uh card 5k and you draw a card to push stuff up to solve what's on the board. Um, nothing really to talk about there. Uh, we do play one stride crit. Uh, this is just for consistency because uh, this was going to be an Urwatar. I was about to cut this out and play three Urwatar, one cat. And then I was like, I still like having 10k defensives. And this enables me to stride. So one more stride enabler and another defensive 10k was a little too important for me. Plus it's a crit. So as you guys can tell, we don't have a lot of crit pressure in this deck. Because we play in total of six, including the over trigger. But um, that's fine, right? So we're able to play through that out. 
Uh, for the stands, we're playing two Orbitar and one of the Cat. The Cat's for the defensive plays where you can uh, bottom deck some shenanigans, uh, give your Vanguard 10 gay, and then shuffle, right? Um, you also have the Urbitar. The Urbitar is like the best card in the deck because you can continually, again, put triggers back to your deck that get stuck in your hand. So the amount of times, the amount of heart thump workers I've put back to deck because it's like, cool, it's a crit if I check it and it's a draw card if I don't. Like, so such a good card. The Urbitar is crazy. Uh, if you do want to play three though, if you do really want to play the third Urbitar, you can cut this, um, for the third Urbitar. Of course, like I just like the two because I don't like playing too many 5k triggers. Um, but these are just too good. Plus, like, you search these out, like, more often than not to where, like, the cards in your deck are 5Ks. But I just didn't want to have, like, any chances of those being stuck be the 5Ks. And then I would have felt really bad. Um, then for the rest, three draw PGs. So we play seven defensive draws, um, pretty much. And then, like, the over triggers your eighth. But, yeah, three draw PGs. Uh, no reason not to, right? Uh, and then four heals. So... My friend that picked up Gear Chronicle that I put on Crestjet, my boy Willie Garcia, the premium antagonist, wanted to play one of the Counter Charger. I still value the consistency of Gear Dog 8, and I can't literally bring myself to do it, although you have no resource regen in this deck. So you really do rely kind of on your free extenders, and then like if you have to have the Hanali, to have the Hanali, right? Um, so that's that's my gripe with this deck. Uh, is that there's no good like counter charge soul charge like mid battle phase like there's just so much like things you can talk about um but i wish i wish there was right uh like you could play the pulsar tamer right the the, the 7k that's the ztb and the the workeroid but um yeah uh yeah you have to play four heal guardian like the, the like the format's too aggro right now anyway to be like uh, you can't like you i don't think you can afford to to play the one up like inside this deck because the big problem with gears is like gears is an offensive deck like it does not have defense for its life like our header around is not a denial griffin unless like we call an order which happened in the finals too i spun back i think it was the grenache or the um or the ghost no i spun back the ghost ship yeah he called the ghost ship in the finals he was going uh second but he was trying to like rush me back so he had the riveting frange he called the ghost ship so he uh swings the the riveting frange to call the ghost ship back and I just go, cool, uh, head her around. And I shuffle the deck, cut it, and he calls the four all. And I go, ah, oh, say less. This is cool. So, like, actual denial, Griffin. But, um, yeah, just, these are these are too important, like, for going second just to give yourself the defensives to live. So, like, you have to you have to do it. And then you love him, you hate him, the over trigger. Uh, we play the blue one because while the Dark States one is phenomenal for in terms of pressure, like, you get that 10k in a crit for the entire game. I prefer adding a heal back to my hand to make my G-Zone bigger. And I can give the crit anywhere. That's the other thing too. Like if, I, if they PG my Vanguard, the Dark State's OT is dead. I like this for the flexibility of where so I can go, cool, crit and the uh, crit and the 100 million over here or 100 million here, crit here. Like I just like being able to split it up. Like the, the, that's just my thing too. Is I think it's the great nature within me. Maybe, maybe it is, maybe it's not. But uh, this card is, this card is still crazy. Um, you could play the red OT too, but I don't think it's worth it. Like in my personal opinion, I think the blue OTs is way better. Plus you're drawing more cards. You draw a card off this and you're adding a card from your drop to your hand. So, um, don't sleep. Don't sleep. Alrighty. Now on to the G zone. We're playing, of course, the harmonics Messiah. This is the staple. You have to be playing this card in 2024. Um, your good news, though, is that this summer, if you do not have this and you don't want to drop the money on a promo, you can spend, like, half the money that it is on a promo on pre-ordering those uh, those deck sets. So go shop with Scholar, and you get the Elementaria and one of these with the text inside your uh, deck. So don't worry. It's coming if you don't have it yet. But this card is still too crazy to not play. Um, so, yeah, like, you just have to play this. Like, this just makes the Mazer gear even more broken um, if I'm keeping it a stack. Then two copies of Lost Age. Again, we've kind of covered Lost Age because we covered causality, but like this just going first, uh, this this will always be your first stride because it makes you your markers. And so you'll always do the causality lines. Like there's no way, um, if you don't ride into the Chrono Jet, like if you have to ride into G, this is the only way like this won't be your first stride because you just need to make the markers. Um, but yeah, this card's crazy. Like go, go, go wild, go wild. Um, then we play two copies of Gear Groovy. 
this is to copy cards so the rest of these cards are going to be like valid targets except for one um that you copy with the gear groovy and so the gear groovy lets you play into chaos and into bugs and stuff like actually really well because you get to like restand your vanguard um once you like destride and go into the chrono jet so this card is very very strong uh do not sleep on the boy gear groupie um because he flips a lot of cards too so like he like actually gear groovy is like the main like accelerator of the entire crest um support line uh for the things and i do want to talk about this for a second as you guys can see i'm playing both next stages so uh so a twitter user actually asked me why both next stages this will flip this one and even though it's still a pitch three the fact that it flips a card um and returns itself to the g zone is bigger so like if you need just more if you just have excess counter blast and you just need to get your numbers bigger to push your opponent for game you can copy this one with the gear groovy or what you can do is that if you want like multiple um like uh next stage plays you can literally hard stride into this because you can do normal stride with this because this is the only thing that requires you to discard a specific card in the entire g zone um you can go Chrono Dragon next stage. Next stage flips to this, and these go to the G zone. And then you can go Groovy next turn. You can flip the next stride though, that we play, and then you can have a more broken turn where you like you got to your, like reset your Vanguard twice. So it does come up, especially in like the Chaos Breaker and Link Joker, uh, Chaos Breaker matchups, um, the Bugs matchups, stuff like that. Um, we're just trying to force PGs out at this point. So yeah, uh, very good, very good. Uh, don't don't sleep. Uh, we play one copy of history build this card's crazy this card's like always more often than not your second strike because this is just where all your multi-attack comes in uh you get a soul blast one flip a card face up in your g zone you get to time leap uh, equal to the amount of cards face up in your g zone so uh, at minimum it's going to be three if you've uh if this is your second strike because you've done lost age so uh, time leap three is like also what about like you do too um and also what you get to flip um is the shlishma so the shlishma is acts is, acts more as an extender in the deck um there's very rare times where i will keep this face down unless i know my opponent is going to actively damage deny me and i've already like had some melums and stuff stuck so what i can do is that i can just call some melums like or like have one counter blast right then i can just do this have like a history build and a melum stuck then i can go like okay cool i'm gonna bind the card i call for my hand call these two uh swing melum melum's gonna put grab me the urwatar and then time leap urwatar into something so there's just many like cheeky lines you can do like with the slishma but the slishma is more of an extender for the history build because you're gonna scale into a three then you're gonna soul blast then you're gonna call over it um with another three it's soul blast and call it again so you there's a lot of times where you call slishma twice in one turn which i can i can show you guys those combo lines as well in a combo video uh because there's just so many combos with this deck that i'm literally going to have to do a separate video um and it's literally not for ad revenues is that i really just want to talk about the combos for like 30 minutes because i've gone on for so long with this deck profile already um because this, this deck's crazy um, on to the G guards. We're going to play two copies of hetero round dragon. Uh, this card is still really good. Um, in combination with the cat and some other things like it's fine, but like, it's still really good. Um, you don't want to sleep on this card like at all. Uh, the card's too good. The card's too good. Um, especially like in the grand blue matchup again. I know I've talked about this matchup a lot. It's just one of the ones I play into more often than not though. Because like Jared's one of my primary playtesting partners. Uh, you don't use this to mess with Skull Dragon unless unless you're at very high damage count. And the Skull Dragon's just too big. Then you then you have to spend Skull Dragon. But at, in, in the early game if I want to activate this card. I'm getting rid of Grenache. I'm getting rid of the, the, the combo piece enablers. Um, that he has to then go fish back out again with a big Obadiah. Like it's just very inconvenient for him when he like hollows the the um, the Grenache, and I go, cool, okay, you're gonna swing this call, and that Grenache is stood. Cool, we're gonna spin the Grenache, and where you get to call another card, but you don't get that counter charge to at the end of the turn, which is huge. Um, turning, getting them away from their counter charge is is very important in that matchup. Um, but again, yeah, header around is like our like pseudo denial Riffin, so we, we like it. Uh, one Uluru of the OG. This is just get, puts a trigger in a normal unit back to deck. Like if we need to, if we have a specific one of that's in our drop and we have like a heal, cool. We return a heal in that one of back to our deck. Um, very, very simple. Um, kind of one of like the, the cheesier cards I have in here is the big Uluru. Uh, um, <laughs> you can, you can play this or you can cut this for another stride. 
I just used this because there was a lot of points where it's like my opponents were just trying to punt me in anyway. So like they were giving me like three open CV. I was like, screw it, I'm just gonna G guard and flip another card face up. So like when this returns, like not only was this a big shield, but like now like my G zone is 10K bigger for off the crest. So that was like the main uh, point with that, um, honestly. But you can honestly cut that Uluru if you wanna play another stride option, uh, like a, uh, um, a Fate Rider or something. Then one copy of our um, PG guy, this in theory comes up in the DP matchup. I haven't yet to use him though. Uh, even though he does become a pretty big shield, he comes like a 35K on his own. Um, I haven't used him yet, so. You can just CB though to, 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 to bypass the, the Linka thing. Like that that's the theory of why he's here. I didn't know if anyone was gonna play DP at the event. So that's why I was like, oh, I'm gonna have it in there just in case. Uh, we're gonna play one copy of Rafana though. This card is so gas if you have two heals because then you get to set up the whole entire like Denagraphing give 10k thing with this and header around because uh, you just get to call the cat with this So this card's so good. Also too though. You could like call a TikTok or you can call a um A Urwatar. Um, there's actually a cheeky line you can do with this and the next G guard which I'll show off which is bear lock If you still have a if you have two one if you have a, a, a one another card That's a grade one or greater and a grade one and a grade two You can go and you can go grab the Urwatar from deck then go and bind and G guard into the bear lock And this becomes a 30k shield because you have bound three cards and then you get to proc the Urwatar Like so you get to do some crazy stuff like that where you get to get to draw cards Um, which I really like uh, that's why like I think Urwatar like you can justify running it as a three of I just don't like the fact it's a 5k. Um, well, that's really like the only reason why like I have um, any sort of like problem like with that card um, necessarily. But again, like this, this deck, I mean, don't sleep, bro. If this deck hits the crest, you you probably might die. That's that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say because this deck, this deck was so much fun to play. Um shout out to everybody that was there like i had great games uh we had pretty good ones um i had a really great time this was like a lot of fun i'm just glad that i got to prove that this deck is not like helmet dead like so uh be, stay tuned for the whole entire combo video where i'm going to guys going to show you a bunch of combo lines for this deck um of where like you know your time leap patterns and things happen of what you can do with like two to three cards in hand and stuff like that like so like don't worry at all like this deck this deck crazy crazy good um but uh yeah with that being said i hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and a wonderful rest of your week if you have not yet make sure you guys like comment subscribe all that good stuff go shop with all of my amazing sponsors they're some of the best people that i've worked with and i'm so so thankful and meaning that so much when i say that every time um and yeah with that being said, until next time, I love you all, God bless, and take care. Stay.